Hi everybody, my name is Joey and I'm Think Prep's resident math guy and today we're going to go over the free response question for the AP Calculus AB 2019 exam, question number two. So here in question two we're asked to justify why there must be at least one time t between the interval 0 0.3 and 2.8 at which v prime of t, the acceleration of the particle, equals zero meters per hour per hour. So whenever I'm asked to justify something. I think of one of three theorems that I can use on this test. We can use IVT, which is the intermediate value theorem. We can use MVT, which is the mean value theorem. Or we can use Rolle's theorem, which is actually just a more specific version of the mean value theorem when f of b minus f of a is equal to zero. So since we're asked for the derivative, of v, our function, then we know we can't use the intermediate value theorem, so we must use MVT. So let's check to see that we've satisfied the conditions for MVT. Number one, our function must be both continuous and differentiable. So if we're looking at the opening of the question, it says that the velocity of the particle p is given by the differentiable function v of p. Well, you need to know that if a function is differentiable, then by definition, it is also continuous. So we've checked off that category. Let's also check what our um, difference between our f of b and our f of a is. So they give us these as our boundaries. So we can call 0 0.3 our a and 2.8 our b. So this is our a and this is our b. Therefore, this would be our f of a and this would be our f of b. So then f of b minus f of a is equal to 0. So we've also satisfied that condition for Rolle's theorem. So then if I wanted to answer the question, I'd probably say something like this. Because vp of t is both continuous and differentiable, and because vp of 2.8 minus vp of 0 0.3 is 0, mean value theorem, or you can say Rolle's theorem, states that there must be at least one value of t on the interval, this interval, such that vp prime of t is equal to 0. And that should be enough to get you to answer question two, part A. Part B. Part B asks us to use a trapezoidal sum with these three subintervals, one, two, and three, to approximate the value of the integral from zero to 2.8 of vp of t. The integral is also known as the area under the curve. So to refresh really quickly, the area of the trapezoid from geometry is one half b1 plus b2 times height. Or I like to think of this formula as we're averaging the two bases and we're timesing it by the height of the trapezoid. Now, how does this relate to a coordinate plane? Well, let's say I plot these two points on the coordinate plane, and we'll call this one a, and we'll call this one b. Then this point would correspond to the y value of f of a. That's just the calculus way of looking at it. And then this point corresponds to the y value of f of b. And then I'm going to connect my dots to make the best looking trapezoid I can make. And so what is the height of this trapezoid? Well, if everybody turns their head sideways, you can actually see that this line between a and b is the height of the trapezoid. And then how do we calculate that distance? Well, we can just do b minus a. We take the bigger number minus the smaller number to find the distance here. And then this, we could call our b1, and this b1 has the value of f of a. And this, we can call this one our secondary base, which corresponds to the value of f of b. So if we wanted to use uh, function notation to express the area of our trapezoid, we could say 1 half the value of f of a plus f of b. And instead of saying height, we could call our height b minus a. So let's go ahead and do that with our three subintervals. Our first subinterval goes from 0 to 0 0.3. So the difference between our two x values would be 0 0.3. This would be my f of a, and this would be my f of b. So this first area can be written as 1 half 0 
plus 55 times 0 0.3. And then we can do that for our second interval. This difference is 1.4. Now this is my new base 1, this is my base 2, so I'm going to plus 1 half 55 plus negative 29 and then times it by 1.4. One more time with this subinterval. This has a difference of 1.1. Let's use this as our base one. This is our base two. And then so it'd be negative 29 plus 55 times 1.1. And thankfully, this is on the calculator portion of the exam, so I don't have to spend all day making arithmetic errors. This would be 40.75. And this question doesn't ask you for units, but let's just go over units just in case. Remember that the integral of velocity is also known as displacement. Displacement is a type of distance, and if we look at the units here, the distance should be measured in meters. That's the answer for part b. So in part C, we're given a brand new second particle Q that moves along this interval 0 to 4 with this new crazy complicated trig function. And then we're trying to find the time interval during which the particle of Q, the velocity of particle of Q, is at least 60 miles per hour. At least means greater than or equal to. And then we want to find the total distance traveled by particle Q. So if you think back to total distance, and we kind of did a question like this a second ago, is that the total distance is equal to the absolute value of the velocity along some sort of interval. What's the interval here? Well, we need to find that interval, so we actually can't answer this question yet. So let's use our calculator to figure out the interval. So what we're going to do to find that interval is we're going to go ahead and plug in two equations. So I plugged in v of t right here, the equation that they gave me, and then in y sub 2, I plugged in 60 because what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to find the points of intersection. A couple things to note here. Make sure with trig functions that your calculator is in radian mode. So go to mode and make sure that radians are highlighted. It honestly should be that way for your whole test. And the other thing we need to do is we need to know how to set our window. So I've set my x min and x max to be 4 because they gave our interval to be 0 and 4. And then for my y min and y max, I know that I'm trying to find where the function is at least 60. So I set my max to 100. And then this y scale over here is just how often do they make tick marks. And I set it at 10 because I just hate seeing a bunch of tick marks on my screen. So I'm just going to hit graph. These are the two graphs. The blue one is a trig function. The red one is 60. So I'm going to go ahead and calculate the point of intersection. So I go second, calc, intersect is number 5. So I'm going to scroll down to number 5. And in, oops, I went down to number 6. And in order to calculate the point of intersection, all we need to do is we need to scroll over, get close enough to where the two lines are crossing. It doesn't need to be exact. And then we're going to hit enter for first curve. We're going to hit enter for second curve, and then when it asks guess, all you need to do is click enter a third time. And it gives you the full intersection point. So I get x is equal to that number. So I'm just going to write that. I'm going to call that a. a is equal to 1.86618815. Again, you don't need to be super accurate. Only three decimal places is enough. And then let's do the point of intersection again for the second point. Scroll over. Close enough. One, two, three. The intersection is 3.5191744. Good. Okay. I copied that exactly. So I'm going to do this really fun thing that I like to do. I'm going to use the store function. So 1.8661815. And then if you hit this stow button here, 
this actually allows you to store into certain letters on your calculator. So I'm going to store that into A. So every time I access A for the rest of my tests, it's going to be that number. And I suggest you do that for all questions throughout the whole test so you don't lose track of all the different numbers because there's going to be a bunch of numbers that you're going to have to use. And then I'm going to do the same thing for B, 5191744. And I'm going to store that into letter B. And now we're going to use our integral function. So we go math. We go down to our interval. Went too far right there. And on the bottom, I'm going to put in A. And I'm going to top, I'm going to put in B. And then just so I don't have to repeat the function too, I can also do this vars thing. So I go to vars, I go to y vars. And under function, I actually put the function in y1. So that's going to be the same exact trig function, dx. And so I hit enter, and I get my answer is 106.109. And then I can go ahead and rewrite these numbers into my bounds. But since I've already labeled them as a and b, I can literally just put the a and the b right there. And just to be on the safe side, I want to make sure to put in my units too. And since we're doing distance, my units will be in meters. And that's how you do part C. So part D says at time t equals 0, the particle q at position x is negative 90. And using the results from part B and the function from part C, approximate the distance between the two particles at time 2.8. Well, from part B, we got that the integral from 0 to 2.8 of Vp of t was equal to 40.75. And what you do need to know is that when you take the integral of the velocity without the absolute value, that's the displacement. So that's basically how far you moved from the beginning. And notice that, according to the question, particle p at the times equals 0 is at the origin. So this is basically saying it moved 40.75 meters from the origin. So I could have a plus 0 over here. And then the second part is saying it says use the function from part c. We're actually not going to use the answer that we got in part c. We're going to have to do another calculation over here because we calculated the total distance traveled, which is not going to be the same as the displacement. So let's calculate the displacement. Here's the calculator. And then we're going to go to math, 9. We're going to calculate the displacement from 0 to 2.8. And instead of calculating the whole function, I'm going to go back to y vars, y vars, function, y sub 1, and we're taking the integral with respect to x in this calculator. Took a while to think, but we got that the displacement is 135.938 meters. So this is the displacement traveled. But notice that's, that it said from the beginning, it started at 90. So we actually needed to add our starting point over here. So then it's 135.938 meters plus negative 90 meters. So at 2.8 seconds, we're at 45.938 meters. That's where point Q is. And then if we want to find the total distance between the two points, since they're just on a line, we're just going to find this minus this. We go 45.938 minus 40.75. And then we get that the two particles are approximately 5.188 meters apart. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment below and I'll answer it as soon as I can see it.